Hey guys, welcome back to the edit place and today we're taking a look at some sample footage from a hundred thousand dollar camera. Now this thought process basically started a little bit ago when I was, you know, minding my own business, editing one of my own projects and looking at the footage while grading it being like, man, this looks so good. How much better can it really get? Now I'm not totally delusional. I mean, I've shot with red cameras a bunch and those cost like 20 times as much as my Blackmagic Pocket 4K or even 6K. I've shot a bunch of mirrorless cameras, you know, GH5, A7S III, and I even dabbled with for a while the Canon C100. But to be honest, the past couple of years, my primary focus has been my Blackmagic cameras and then renting reds whenever I'm working on a project that can justify those prices. And so I really wanted to see, is the fanboy in me really just looking at red as too symbolic and too like cool of an image? Can an image get even better than that? And so while scouring the internet for different sample footages from the latest cameras, and so I went over to none other than Ari's website and downloaded some sample footage they have on there for the Ari Alexa Mini LF and the Alexa 65. Now to fill in the one or two people who don't know this, Ari is essentially the Hollywood standard of cameras. And so on Ari's website, you can actually download the full raw footage or a couple other different uh, codecs here. But for the Mini LF, they had eight clips here. And for the Alexa 65, they had three. Now I'll leave all these linked down in the description below if you wanna check them out. But keep in mind that all these clips are around 10 seconds or so, but the 11 clips in total topped out at about 75 gigs. But basically, I just wanna hop into this footage and see what all the fuss is about. So I'm gonna create a new timeline, drag all these in here. All right, and again, this is the Alexa Mini LF camera. Now, what is the Mini LF? The Alexa Mini has been out for a while, but this is the same body type with the large format sensor. Now, one of the most notable projects that this has been used on in recent times, it's freaking 1917, which Roger Deakins won best cinematography for that movie because they basically shot a fake one -er where the entire movie looks like a single shot. And in a recent interview where he was talking about 1917, he pretty much attributed the Alexa Mini LF to be the reason and the sole reason why they were able to shoot that because they wanted, you know, the same quality that a um, full frame large format sensor gives, but they needed the super small body type um, so that the camera operators wouldn't get, you know, exhausted running around uh, for, you know, five to six minute takes. Now going through some of this footage real quick, let's see, it looks like the first one is some sort of already sque uh, de-squeezed anamorphic. I don't know which lens this would be on their website. They say that they use their prime lenses and then they list a couple different focal lengths, but they don't go into detail about specifically which lens did what shot. Now already you can tell the amazing dynamic range because you have incredibly harsh sunlight. You can tell by these very harsh shadows but not a single piece of detail is lost. And that's one of the biggest characteristics of any Hollywood film is the amount of dynamic range. Most people think that in order to look more cinematic and more Hollywood, you have to have 4K, 6K, 8K, whatever. But for a long time, Ari's maxed out at like 3.2K because they believed for the sensor size and the quality of pixel that they got out of it, 3.2K was it. Now the Mini LF will actually shoot up to 4.5K and the Alexa 65 is actually a large format 6K sensor and it's Ari's first time ever going to 6K or up. Okay, here's a great example of that high dynamic range. You can see, again, it's super harsh sunlight. You can see all these um, highlight points coming in. And then all of this looks like it's just naturally lit. It doesn't look like there's any artificial light anywhere. And not a single point. Is it too bright or too dark? That is one soft shot. And I'm not talking about the bunny rabbit. And then you'll notice that the aspect ratio of this completely changed. So if I go back to here, this is more your traditional like 16:9 aspect ratio. But then what happens is when you go to this, this is called open gate when you're using the entire sensor's resolution. Because a lot of times cameras won't shoot um, their full sensor readout. And so if I look at the metadata of this shot, for example, I can see that the actual resolution is 
4448 by 3096. I don't know why that was so hard to read. Compared to going back to this shot, this is your standard Ultra HD 3840 by 2160. Now, of course, one thing to know about sample footage is they are always going to show you very easy clips. And what I mean by that is I guarantee no matter what LUT I throw on this, it's going to look like near perfection with pretty much no other changes. So for example, if I look at my movie inspired looks here at a node, again, here's 1917. Oh no, the highlights are gone. Whatever will we do? Going into the raw settings, pulling down highlights. I think the shadows are crushed, bring those up a bit. Bring that mid-tone detail, bring the highlights down even more. Again, perfection. If we go back to that one shot uh, with the high dynamic range, again, for any other camera, this would be near impossible. Like even my Black Magic, which shoots in RAW, has pretty good dynamic range at, they say 13. It's probably more like around 11 to 12. And I bet most of the cameras that you guys use, you know that you either have to make a choice here. You either have to expose for the inside and just let that window be blown out or expose for the outside and hope that you can raise your shadows in post enough without it being too noisy to save the image. Or the proper way to do it, if you know your camera's limitations, would be to expose for the outside and then light the inside to be able to match exposure. But again, with an R, you can be in almost any scenario and you're not gonna run into these issues. So again, if I slap a lot on this, 1917, Black Panther, Blade Runner, Again, if you were going for any of these styles, then... And again, you look at a lot like this, No Country for Old Men. Again, you'd think that like, ooh, this is crushing the blacks quite a bit, or the highlights. It's all still there. If I bring up the scopes right now, pull those over here for a second, you can see that all that data is perfectly still there. Now, obviously that movie is going for that look, so you kind of want to um, have very deep shadows and highlights, but if you want this to be more even, it's not gonna take much work. I can simply drop down the highlights. Boom, there's all that information still there. I could go over to the raw controls. Should have pulled highlights from in here. I can make this like an HDR image <laughs> and, uh, you know, go crazy bringing back the shadows. You have something that from the start of the clip all the way to the end is perfect without ever having to adjust exposure or any of that. Again, it just allows you to be in any scenario and pretty much it can be natural light or artificial light, mixed color temperatures, and you're not going to lose any of that information. So let's jump back at and check out this Alexa 65 footage here. All right, so we got three clips here. It looks like a couple walking up to a car. We got a sunset on a beach and you know that's going to look good. And then, oh, actually a drone shot going over the street here. Watch this. 1970. Footage is making me sad. I literally didn't do any other adjustments. I, it just lit literally take your pick. They're all perfect. And this is the stuff that makes selling LUT packs so crucial. Cause you know, when you watch those like LUT promos and it starts off with something like this, where it's like the raw footage and then it does like the, the wipe thing. And it's like, whoosh, turn your footage into this. But then like you buy that LUT pack and you know, even take your own sunset picture and do it. And you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. And you either have to make a bunch of adjustments or it doesn't work at all. That's because a lot of time LUTs are used using incredibly high-end RED cameras, RE cameras, and that's what those promos are using. And if I go to like this drone shot here, see what happens. Just have... you got, it's like I'm watching a movie. Someone can comment down below how to tell my wife that instead of saving for a house, we can just buy this camera. Basically, I wanted to create this video for a couple reasons. There's one, to bring light to the fact that there's way more important uh, specs essentially than how many K's your camera shoots in. My Blackmagic Pocket 6K shoots at 6K on a Super 35 essentially type sensor. And this is a large format sensor, 6K, 
and it's about a hundred thousand dollars but there's so much more to the camera that arguably i'd say pretty much the most important thing is the lens there's one thing i've learned over the years that if you have the option to either buy a really nice camera and a cheap lens or buy a okay camera with a really nice lens always buy the better lens and I'll prove that point real quick. I just imported one of the projects I worked on uh, last year, and it was actually for a um, sorority promo. And these were all shot on my Pocket 6K. And if I was using my kit lens or anything like that, these shots would not look as good as they do. These were shot, I can never pronounce them, so I looked it up. The uh, Ingenue whatever easy lenses, I mean, these lenses are like $11,000 and re-rented them for the day um, just to get a bunch of these shots. And using a lens like this pretty much is maxing out the quality and capability of what my camera is capable of, but it's still nowhere near what would be possible with something like the Ari. Because again, if I go back to... So I took one of the shots here where basically uh, this is a tunnel before you enter in the football stadium and this was a super bright day as you can tell from the back and basically what had to happen here is again the limit of dynamic range again eleven thousand dollar lens but I'm exposed for in the tunnel because I want to see them walking by the way I was like a B operator and my friend who was on the A cam was on a gimbal and everything so his shot was really smooth this was kind of like a throwaway shot for me but I just grabbed it so ignore the uh, shaky footage but anyway they're walking they're walking and then as soon as they start to come into the sunlight boom now again I shoot raw I have a black magic let's see what we can do to repair this I can go in going to go into my raw controls, going to uh, turn on highlight recovery, which did a lot actually, literally clicking that one button. Look at this girl's skirt and then this girl's uh, shirt here. Boom, detail. And then I can bring the highlight roll off back. I can lower the exposure. That's not doing a whole lot. And go under my primaries. Now it's just kind of crushing the highlights and making them look poopy. And you see what's happening here is if I bring back up my scopes, you can see these solid lines here at the top. That means you have clipped the highlights. There's absolutely nothing you can do. That data is gone. And by the way, if I did attempt to properly expose this for being out here, then as soon as they go back here, now we're underexposed again. And you'll notice that as they walk out, I actually had to change the aperture. You'll see it here in a second. There it was. And that's not uncommon. I mean, there are plenty of professional Hollywood shoots where someone's not only pulling focus, but also changing the aperture. But yeah, going back to my final point here is the fact that, that as you go up in the cinema camera world to make something truly look cinematic, the camera has to capture as much data as humanly possible. You or I are not going to own this camera anytime soon. If you are, then congrats to you. But one benefit of downloading sample footage is so that you can actually play around so that if you're like me and you're a freelance editor, then if clients send you footage from different cameras, you kind of know how to handle it. So I definitely recommend checking out not only Ari's footage. If you're a Canon shooter, go check out Sony or Blackmagic or vice versa and switch it up and kind of play around with different footage. And I really uh, recommend trying to shot match different cameras because a lot of times, especially on lower budget stuff, You'll have like the A cam is like a Canon C200 and then like the B cam is a Sony FS5. Try matching those two up. So thanks for hanging out with me and checking out some of this beautiful footage from Ari. And yeah, thanks for checking out the edit place and I'll see you guys in the next video.